What brought to an end of this great era of peace and prosperity? That is the Mongol Empire. The Mongols crushed Song at the Battle of Yamen in 1278, even when outnumbered ten to one. And the ensuing Yuan Dynasty in China devastated both the Chinese population and also any sense of progress that might have taken place during the Song. But the question remains: How close were the Song Dynasty to industrializing at the time of the Mongol invasion? What factors would be necessary to facilitate an industrialization as we envisioned it today? The Song Dynasty was a surprisingly modern nation of its time, as we mentioned earlier. Steel had already been developed before the dynasty by the state of Wu in 500 BC. Clearly, the Song Dynasty mastered the iron smelting technology very well. In terms of the economy, the Song Chinese invested their funds and joint stock companies, and selling vessels from both external and internal trade along waterways such as the Grand Canal and the Yangtze River. Merchant families prospered and could form guilds and trade unions. The Song also used coal for blast furnaces, while smelting cast iron in the 11th century and later on. The Song Dynasty had a massive market due to its large population, was using coal as an energy source instead of charcoal. And had a positive and a stable political climate that could promote industrialization. So why didn't the Song Dynasty industrialize? First of all, having all the necessary ingredients for a key process or event does not necessarily make such a process inevitable. An example is the invention of eyeglasses. With ear pieces and a hook over one's ears, even though eyeglasses at rest on one's nose was apparently by the year thirteen hundred, it took at least four hundred more years to create modern glasses. This issue is known as hindsight bias. People tend to use hindsight. Knowledge when judging past events. However, historians have proposed key factors that may have hindered possible Song industrialization. Firstly, the society of the Song Dynasty and those in Europe, which industrialized later in Europe timeline, were vastly different. The Song placed a large emphasis on the family unit, not on the individual, and also was a regional hegemonic power with no direct external threat. On the other hand, Europeans promoted the value of individuals and struggled with one another for dominance. This interstate struggle likely promoted technological progress unseen in the Song Dynasty. The Song also believed in the status quo and a revolutionary new ideas that may have arisen were likely suppressed. Other historians, called members of the English school, believed that China fell into. A high-level equilibrium trap. This means that non-industrial methods are efficient enough that no use of industrial methods with high initial capital were needed. In short, the extremely large labor pool of the Song Dynasty and also lower labor costs may have hindered the development of machines. 
a strong centralized government with different social beliefs and a lack of necessity for industrialization, could explain why it was Europe, and not the Song Dynasty that industrialized first. However, given enough time, the Song clearly had the capacity to industrialize. During the time of the Song Dynasty, it existed in competition with the contemporaneous Liao, Western Xia, and Jin Dynasty to his north, and it is possible that it could industrialize to obtain an advantage over its enemies. But any possibility of an early industrial revolution was obliterated with the Mongol invasion of the Song Dynasty. During the forty-four years of invasion, the Song resisted the Mongols, and entire cities were sacked, and the Mongols attacked like a force of nature. Up to half of the Song Empire's population may have perished in the invasion. Before Yuan started, Chinese reported a hundred and twenty million people living in China. Afterwards, reporting just sixty million people due to invasion, killing, plague, and maybe failure to record exact numbers.